Good morning. Welcome to Üsküdar University TV. My name is Murat Otoglu. I am a lecturer at Psychology Department of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. And uh, today we will be talking about attention in psychological sciences. Along with attention, there are a number of uh, cognitive components that we study in psychological sciences, such as memory, decision making, problem solving, emotion regulations, uh, perception, and many other. These components also have subdivisions. So we are talking about a vast amount of literature here. And it's like, like an ocean of literature. And the ocean is deep and vast at the same time. So therefore, I decided that instead of talking about cognition in general, maybe considering these components one by one will be more helpful and useful for everybody. And aside from it, attention is something that I am interested in and I have been into a number of studies of attention. So therefore, I believe uh, starting with attention is a good point. We will be considering the behavioral and cognitive components of attention. Let's start with the definition. How do we define attention? Behaviorally speaking, in order to attend, pay attention to one object or one stimulus, we have to ignore the distracting stimuli around it. Only those people who can do this in a healthy way can show healthy attention skills. So, for example, we don't do something like this, right? If the person is driving a car, the focus of attention should be on the car, on the road actually, or the relevant uh, stimulus. And in order to pay attention to relevant stimulus, this driver should be able to ignore the irrelevant stimuli. Let's explain this with another example. Uh, right now you are watching me, your attention is on me, you are paying attention to me by listening and by following me with your eyes. And while you are doing it, probably there are a number of distractors around you, such as the noise coming from outside, or your five-year-old child horsing around, or maybe uh, your baby is crying. Well, if your baby is crying, uh, probably you should go pay attention to your baby. But aside from it, in order to focus your attention on me, you have to ignore the irrelevant stimulus. Behaviorally speaking, the term is ignoring. On the other hand, cognitively speaking, the term is inhibiting. Because cognitively speaking, while some neurons on your brain are focusing on the target stimulus, which is me in this case, there are some other neurons focusing on the distracting stimuli. Those other neurons should be inhibited. That way we can pay full attention and healthy attention. What we understand from this number of things. First of all, attention is not limitless. This is what we understand. There is a certain capacity. There is a certain limit of attention, just like any other cognitive processing. Another good example for this is uh, the illusionist. How the illusionists make their performances. Two fundamental things. Number one, they use our limited attention capacity to trick us. Because they know the fact that in order to focus on one thing, we have to all the irrelevant stimulus. That way we can focus on one thing. So that's number one. They use our limited attention capacity to trick us. And number two is quick hands. Their hands are so quick that we cannot catch them. So these are some proofs that uh, showing our limited attention capacity. Well, now you can ask me, how is this guy, this minibus driver, is paying attention to road? 
because his main concern as a driver should be the road so that he will not cause any accident right however look at how many distractors around him taking the money from the customer counting the money returning the money back that's number three already three distractors smoking a cigarette uh, drinking a cup of, cup of coffee there are totally we count five distractors how is he able to do this well I have to say that some of these distractors are relevant for his work some of them are not for example relevant ones are taking the money counting the money and returning the money back those are relevant for his work uh, irrelevant ones are smoking drinking so how is he able to do this let's articulate on that first of all we have to understand that we are adaptable beings we learned that from Darwin survival of the fittest remember and basically what this person is doing is fitting to his environment those who can fit to the environment survive those who cannot fit or adapt to the environment will not so whatever he is doing is also can be done by you all you have to do is to learn the timing that's important here timing procedure so he knows when to take the money from you you extend the money to him he doesn't take right away he knows the precise time to take the money from you and then he takes it he doesn't count right away he has to wait for the right moment to count it and then again he has to wait for the right moment to return your money back he is waiting for the right moment to drink the cup of coffee or right moment for doing whatever he has to do how is he doing it don't think that he is paying attention to multiple things at a time we cannot do that we don't have that ability we cannot pay more than one stimulus simultaneously at one time so what he is doing is focusing on one thing while ignoring the others and he is doing it back to back so at one time he is focusing on something and ignoring the irrelevant stimulus and right away he is focusing on something else and ignoring the irrelevant stimulus and something else such as returning the money back and at that time he is ignoring the irrelevant stimuli in other words he is using divided attention that's what we call at the end of the day they become very tired mental tiredness because all day is passing like this focusing on one stimuli ignoring the other focusing on one stimuli ignoring the other back to back the the switch uh, is occurring maybe every second sometimes so that's how we are able to multitasking multitasking is this multitasking is not doing number of things at one time multitasking is focusing on one thing and ignoring the others and doing it and right after that focusing on something else and ignoring the others we are able to do this thankfully this way we can multitask